Welcome back. You're still watching Shape Your Life, the show that aims to teach you everything you need to know about your health-related matters. We spent some time with orthopedic surgeon Dr. Harry Papagapio, who gave us insightful information on how we can take care of our bones and joints. Doctor, thank you so much for your time and joining us on Shape Your Life. Thank you for having me. Now, when it comes to bone health, we know it's critically important for overall health. Um, but bones are also linked to joints. When it comes to those kinds of concerns, arthritis is a very common concern and condition. What are the signs and symptoms that one should look out for when it comes to arthritis? Well, generally people complain of pain in the joint, but associated with that is stiffness and dysfunction. So those are the symptoms to look out for. And usually the GP will see the patients for all those symptoms and refer them on to a specialist that deals with it. Now being a specialist that deals with this, you know, many people will say you can only get affected with arthritis when you're a lot older in life. Is that true or can it affect you a lot earlier? Well, you've got to divide arthritis into degenerative arthritis or inflammatory arthritis. And the inflammatory conditions do affect the young population as well. Uh, you do get adolescent arthritis, juvenile arthritis. But in general terms, it is more, mostly in the adult population that we see it. Now when it comes to the bones, <laughs> we know many people associate something wrong with my bone, my bone is broken or fractured. But there's a lot more that could go wrong with it as well. What are some of the other you know, key concerns that people could, should look out for when it comes to their bone health? Okay, well there are bone conditions, once again divided into the childhood or pediatric population and also the, the adult patients too. In children we have bone deformities, bone um, density in adults, osteoporosis for example, but then you also have conditions that cause bone tumours and that's one thing to look out for too, but it's more the rare stuff mm -hmm. that we see. So when it comes to osteo osteoarthritis and um, linking that into the bone degeneration as you age, are there any particular signs and symptoms people should look out for? Are they more sensitive on their bones or are their bones more brittle as they age? Yes, what they do get is more pain in their joints and the stiffness, but it's also the dysfunction. So it affects their activities of daily living and in the working population, it affects their function at work. Sportsmen as well, they want to get back to their golf or whatever recreational sport they take part in and that's what they seek help for. Now when it comes to the treatment of that, when you look at you know, osteoarthritis in particular, do you have to go with the medication route only? Is surgery an option or are there any other treatments available? It is quite a broad topic. There are the non-arthroplasty or non-surgical options. So the conservative approach includes medications like you mentioned. So we do divide it into non-invasive to least invasive and then eventually the more invasive surgical options. Drugs that we do offer are, if it's just for the osteoarthritis, basically just to minimize the pain. But then you do use allied medical services as well and they have, play a big role in the management of, of arthritis. These are the physiotherapists, the biokineticists, the chiropractors, and for ankle and foot conditions, the podiatrists. Mm -hmm. We do off offer help also with assisted devices, and this is through the orthotists. So they offer various appliances that they use, orthotics and uh, assisted devices like crutches or canes for elderly pay patients. But then uh, when we move on to things that are a little bit more invasive, we do injectable um, options like cortisone injections, and also you get um, visca supplements, we call them, like Synvisc, for example. And uh, then if that doesn't work, then you start thinking of surgical means of managing osteoarthritis. Even in the surgical category, we divide that into the least invasive, things like keyhole surgery. And having failed an attempt at that, eventually, and if it's a very severe presentation to begin with, the last resort would be things like joint replacement surgery. Now speaking about joint replacement surgery, we know that, I mean, especially when I speak to people about health and fitness, and they often say, I can't do particular exercises because my knees are always sore. Um, yeah, I know you, you, you're very passionate about you know, knee injuries and assist a lot on that basis. So what are the common um, areas that you've noticed that people, when they come and see you, have concern with their knees? Well, being a knee surgeon, I see a lot of sports patients and sports patients generally have issues with the soft tissue structures of the knee. So whether it's a meniscus or a ligament injury. Meniscus injuries are usually either due to, well, repetitive injuries, acute injuries or wear and tear over time. And they do trouble patients with the knees in their sport or their daily activities. And this is the kind of thing we can manage with keyhole surgery. 
wow, that's great to know. So it's not as evasive as there you go, cutting your knee open, <laughs> laying it out on the operation table and off you go. But what happens with the knee replacement? Has technology changed in the context that the rehabilitation time and the recovery time is a lot quicker? It has changed. Things are done a lot quicker. We have better technology out there. We have better implants. And um, the recovery time has minimized dramatically since the beginning of time. When it comes to looking after our bones and our joints, what is your final pearl of wisdom to our viewers out there to ensure that they are healthy, have strong bones, literally good joints, and they can be mobile and functional for the rest of their lives? Okay, so there are various uh, joint supplements that are out there, bone supplements that people do take. What, one thing to look out for is if you have weak bones, osteoporosis in the elderly patients, to get treated early to prevent fractures because um, you know they present with a fracture and a lot of the times that can be life-threatening. So preventing that kind of thing is very important. Doctor, thank you so much for your time out of your busy schedule. I know it's hectic for you and for sharing your knowledge and your passion for us because you've taken a topic that many people don't understand and broken it down into bite-sized chunks that we could all take and implement into our lives and for those that we know to look after their bones and their joints. Well, thank you for having me on, on your show. I always say, you are what you eat. Our resident dietitian, Natalie Matt, supported my statement and gave us nutritional advice on how a good diet can help your bones to stay strong and healthy. How important is nutrition to ensure that we look after our bones? Nutrition is incredibly important because our nutrition determines how we build our entire skeleton and our body and especially when we are young we need to make sure that we have great bone health that will set up a good foundation for life. Now what should we be eating from a vitamin and mineral perspective to ensure that we enhance and entrench this good bone development within our bodies as we grow? Well, in South Africa, we think of ourselves as having a lot of sunshine, but something that is incredibly important for bone health is vitamin D. And vitamin D we get from skin exposure to sunshine, but also from things like um, some of our fatty fleshed fish, sardines, mackerel, pilchards, and from um, eggs as well, egg yolks specifically. Then we also need to make sure, apart from just vitamin D, which helps us absorb calcium, we need to get calcium from our food as well. And we get this, obviously, everyone knows calcium comes from dairy, but also some of our small fish with bones in them, like sardines, for example, and also dark green leafy vegetables like spinach. When it comes to the Middle Ages, okay, and I say Middle Ages because I'm stuck in that category, you know? <laughs> so Middle Aged people, they often don't look at their bone health, they look at everything else. They look at the diseases of lifestyle, they look at their cholesterol levels, they look at their levels of fat around their midriff regions. Mm. But they don't take a conscious approach to be proactive to ensure that they don't suffer from bone density issues as they age. Because the reality is this, is we will lose bone density. So what can we do for young adults and older adults to ensure that we look after our bone health? So beyond just the calcium and vitamin D, there are some other things that South Africans love that are not great for bone mineral density. High salt intake can really be a problem um, and more than 2,000 milligrams of sodium or about a teaspoon of salt a day can be a problem. So we want to make sure that we go easy on the total salt intake and South Africans get on average not 5 grams but about 11 grams of salt today, which is a lot. What about fizzy drinks? We all know that you know people say avoid fizzy drinks because it's high in sugar and of course it will affect one's level of diabetes and could increase your risk of type risk of type 2 diabetes. Mm -hmm. But does it have an impact on our bone health? So colas contain a lot of phosphates and it's very important that we get the balance of phosphates and calcium right in our bodies. And if you're getting a lot of colas, even if it's from an artificial, artificially sweetened source, so like your diet drinks, you, you are potentially throwing your bone health out as well. So we do want to make sure that we are choosing water first and it's actually National Nutrition Week at the moment and the theme is rethink your drink choose water. So water really is the best choice for hydration rather than fizzy drinks. When it comes to women versus men, and I'll say women versus men because when it comes to bone health, it's always marketed that women are more predisposed to bone density issues and concerns. Um, what would your advice be from a nutrition perspective for the women out there to ensure that they look after their bone health? 
So the reason women are more at risk is because our bone mineral density tends to decrease as we lose estrogen during menopause. And it is very important that we set the stage right when we are young. So we actually have our peak bone density by the time we are 30. And that means we need to ensure adequate calcium intake and enough vitamin D. But throughout our lives as women, we need to make sure that we're engaging in the things that are going to keep our bones strong. And this specifically is not diet related, but is exercise related. And we know that women need to do resistance training to keep their bones really strong. So you don't just focus on diet, but also on lifestyle as a way of keeping your bone mineral density um, really good. You mentioned women specifically, but any man who is taking specifically steroids and there are some other drugs that can increase your risk of osteoporosis, it is important that this is discussed with your doctor. So if you're taking steroids specifically or other medications, you can chat to your doctor to make sure that this isn't something that requires supplementation. Natalie, sum it up for me. If you could give a few pieces of advice, you know, two people out there right now is watching the show to look after their bone health, what would those quick tidbits be? Quick tidbits, make sure you are eating a varied diet. Some people do eat dairy, some people don't. You don't have to rely only on dairy sources, but also don't rely on supplements alone. And remember that bone health, it is vital that we move. Um, so exercise specifically, resistance training is going to help keep your bones and your body strong. Thank you so much for your time and for sharing your expert insight with us as always. Thank you. Technology has changed our lives and has played an important part in growing our economy. There have been new innovations in the health sector and Shape Your Life was invited to a live experience to check out how these machines can help save lives. Jasper, thank you so much for joining us. I know you're, it's a busy day for you. And as the CEO of Philips, you know, you have a lot on your plate and to change a lot of perceptions out there, especially on the consumer side. With your brand, many people look at it as a consumer brand. You know, it started off as a lighting company and then progressed into consumables, but it's actually taken another step into a different space that affects and impacts our health. What is that space and tell me more about it. Uh, thank you for having me. Uh, as a company, we've made a very clear and bold decision to become a health technology company, meaning we want to focus. We want to focus on health technologies, and that can be both in the consumer domain, but a lot, of course, is in the B2B domain. So what you've seen over the last years is that we've continued our focus on innovation, on having an impact in life, but we shifted that focus completely to becoming a health tech technology company. That also means that in events as these, we address different audiences, cardiologists, doctors, physicians, hospital directors, and that is a part that maybe you don't see straight away every day, because you, you might think of some of our consumer products, but when you go into a hospital, when you go into a clinic, our presence is strong and we're there, and that's a different way of going to market, it's a different audience, and I believe we, we are very strong in our B2B part as well. What are the health needs that you've noticed and identified as a company in Sub-Saharan Africa that has led this passion into assisting and to driving the health technology element of the business? Well, I think there are, there are a couple of aspects. If you look at access and quality, we still have a long way to go. Access in the sense that a lot of people simply do not have access to healthcare. And even if they have access, the quality is not always that good. It could be simple things as not having clean water or electricity. So one of the things we're aiming on is primary care, where we want to put solutions in place together with our stakeholders, our partners, to allow access and quality. Uh, examples in South Africa are a mini uh, life center, community life center that we've just launched in Deep Sloat, where we really try to offer a primary care solution for people that normally cannot afford it. On the other hand, you, you have very good and high-end hospitals, so we also want to deliver high-tech equipment like Isorian, which helps to reduce, let's say, the impact that you have to make in a person's body because this is all about image-guided therapies. So it's two parts. It's making sure that there is access and quality, and on the other hand, there is very, very good hospitals here. How do we support those as well? 
I think it's brilliant though because without the right equipment, doctors can't do the best job that they can do, even though they have all the knowledge you know, that they've studied. But when we look at Sub-Saharan Africa, and South Africa in particular, we notice that non-communicable diseases, you know, labeled the diseases of lifestyle, yes. are extremely prevalent. Yes. You know, um, there's lack of exercise, lack of eating healthy, and, and you as a brand and a business have also taken a focus on that to support people from the preparation of their foods. Um, I mean, I walked into an event and boom, I'm greeted by uh, uh, juices and by fruits. Yes. Please tell me more about that focus that you've identified as well. So we believe our consumer business is very important because it, it gives us that connection to the consumer. Um, and we do believe that consumers are actually looking to make healthy or smart choices. So what we want to do is we want to ensure that when we bring, bring products to the market, we bring products that allow consumers to make a smart choice. So indeed we have an air fryer which is a product that actually generates fried food but only with a tablespoon of oil. So instead of your traditional uh, basket of oil and there it goes in, and we all know it tastes nice, but we also all know it's not the most healthy. So we design products that help us to ensure that in the whole continuum, from prevention to diagnostics to curing, that we, that we offer choices for people to make a healthy choice. You know that phrase of invest into your health, it's your wealth, your first wealth. Yes. I always say, you know, your first wealth is your health and you're literally taking that to heart. So it's a, it's, it's a business and a brand that is taking compassion and care to another level because you're helping people look after themselves but also helping the providers and the medical practitioners yes. and the hospitals look after their patients. And that is something that I believe is, an, is, 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 is a, the key to success for your business and your brand. Where to from here? Because this experience today is, is showing different highlights and we can experience what you're doing. Please tell me more about that and what is the outcome you hope to achieve with this experience today? Yeah, so I think as all companies, we need to generate an income. So we are doing this for two reasons. First of all, we believe we indeed can make a very positive impact in people's life by offering them healthy choices by educating them, by making sure that from a young age they understand a freshly squeezed juice is much better than a juice with a lot of sugar you buy in the store. We also know that for medical providers, governments, prevention is very important because if you look at the economic cost of uh, admission versus preventing, you can make the case that it's better to do that when people are still young and you educate them to live a, a life uh, which is healthy and, and, and in that way also very fulfilling, right? So it's that combination of, of looking for the economic benefits of making sure people stay healthy throughout their lives, minimizing the, the spiraling cost, and also people feel better. You feel better if you're energized, if you sleep well, if you eat well, so we want to do both. What we're showcasing here today, uh, some of the innovations is, as I mentioned, Azurion. So if you remember 10, 15 years ago, when you would have a cardiovascular, a heart surgery, there was a big cut, they had to open up, yes. you had to recover for a very, very long time. So what this is doing is that it's image-guided therapy. It's trying to ensure that the physicians have the pictures so crystal clear that only with a minimal invasive operational procedure, they can actually achieve the same results. And as a result, you stay in the hospital one or two days instead of that very, very long recovery. We've made it an experience because we believe that our partners, our stakeholders, really need to be emerged. So we have different settings here where with VR they can actually see what the machine does and they can really experience because in that sense doctors are the same, you want to try it hands on, right? <laughs> and that's what this experience is. We tell of course the story, we show the facts, we show the clinical outcomes, but, but we want people to touch it. Thank you for your time today for joining us on Shape Your Life and best of luck with the experience today. Thank you and I hope you will walk around and enjoy the show. Thank you so much. Good. Thank you. Many people are searching for the secret to health and wellness, but when it comes to your bone and joint health, it's simple. Incorporate strength and resistance training into exercises each and every day. Don't forget that you can send your queries or topics that you would like to see being discussed on the show to shapeyourlife at ann7.com. From me, Ronald Avergy and the Shape Your Life team, see you next week.